Why, hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Warrior. Um, so yeah, well, Dragon Warrior 3. When we last left our heroes, we just purchased two Iron Claws from... Uh, whatever the hell that village is. And now we're going to wander outside and kill things until nighttime. Then we're going to enter in that village because there's something specific you can find during the night. And my party is now capable of doing ridiculous damage, which is only going to get better. Um, buying the iron claws for your fighters actually does produce a very, very noticeable difference in... Um, their abilities to fight, obviously, and the amount of damage they do. It more than doubled their attack power, which was steadily increasing. And it is their ultimate weapon, actually. Um, effectively. Later on in the game, you can find a Golden Claw, which does up it quite a bit more. And why did I have everyone attack that? Well, probably because the Mass Moth does piddly damage, and yeah. And done. Right now we just tear through enemies. But the Golden Claw is also cursed, and in, it makes it so you encounter an enemy per step, which is kind of terrible. So, no Golden Claw for us, but we are going to take out the Mass Moth first. And in come the crits. The fighters also have a crit rate that slowly goes up as the, as they gain levels. So right now we basically have two fighters and two healers to keep them up. Um, the hero is under equipped, but that's fine. We're kind of relying on the fighters. So I guess I'm kind of grinding right now. I'm going to cast Surround on those guys. Ooh boy, that's going to be bad. <laughs> They're all surrounded. None of them can hit me. Nope, no hits for you. And now I just destroy you and get lots of experience in gold. I think it's called Knaves, the village that we are just in? I don't know. The villages kind of blend together in this game, to be honest. It is kind of formulaic what you do in this game, but it does give it you a variety of stuff to go through. It's not just all caves. And we are nearing nighttime. Same thing. Cast surround on them. I always get worried when that comes up because I think the mass moth is going to cast surround. All right, we do not know heal more yet, although we are starting to get to the point where that would help. All right, that first one is probably about ready to keel over. Luckily, Willow attacked. Vanquished all of your foes. Mass Moth and four Killer Bees. We'll have Molly attack and Bryant attack the Killer Bees. And Willow wastes her turn, but she's the worst attacker anyway, so it doesn't matter.
was kind of wondering when somebody would level. Learn a spell, learn a spell, learn a... <sighs> you are never going to learn anything. Up, oh, night time! Let's go back to town. Someone's asleep, and there's a skeleton right here. I am a great warrior. It's said that I once defeated a bear with my bare hands. But if you want to know the truth, I used iron claws. Ha ha ha. Well, yeah, iron claws are amazing. Even a very weak wizard can bring down a monster by hitting a vital point with a poison needle. Long ago, they used to sell them at the item store. That is a big hint, ladies and gentlemen. So, how does the merchant get out? I was, I'm wondering. Does he just sleep and have, like, food passed in through the window? Bless it, I won't be fooled again. I'll get you, Kandar. The inn merchant is just doomed to that one spot. Innkeeper. We're going to use the thief's key, because we are going to be thieves. Um... And I guess we have to d discard some of these medical herbs. I'll just use them. We're going to keep the antidotes because our healer has not learned antidote yet. Alright, we're going to steal the poison needle and the club. We're going to sell the poison needle. Poison Needle's best kept on a wizard, which we don't have, and never will have. Shoot, they say they're closing already. Get out of the way! Well, we'll find out what they're closing tomorrow. So we are going to stay at the inn. Alright. Now let's sell the poison needle and the club back to him. This is awesome. <sighs> well, that was a waste of time. I thought it would sell for more. What's in here? Ah, it's the pub. It's eatery. Yeah, eatery, sure. I think this villagers made those angry. So the villagers put to sleep. Sleeping village somewhere. This I can't believe. Yes, it is called No One Else, and it's up north. Well, that's all there is here. Let's see what they have for sale at the weapon shop other than iron claws. Broadsword, iron spear, half plate armor, fighting suit, bronze shield, iron shield. The hero is drastically under-equipped, but to fully equip him would take thousands of gold, which we aren't going to grind for. Um, we could grind for it, but, you know, there's lots of Let's Plays out there. I'm not going to name names that, um, hold on for a second. <sighs> Grind the hell out of their characters before every challenge, and then they just walk through the challenge, and that's fine. I mean, that's what these games were kind of made for, is that you can, if you, if you have a hard time, you can always level up, and, but it is the opinion of CADS, that is me, for these Let's Plays, that that kind of takes away the challenge of it and the excitement of it. Um, I could grind to level 10, 11, 12. I've heard of people who are like level 10. By the time they get out of the uh, cave and go to Romilly. Haha, <laughs> we got the jump on the enemy. And it's probably going to be about the next dungeon or a little bit past it by the time I hit level 10. But I don't care. Uh, 
Um, less, uh, you, you spend less time playing the game, you get more of a challenge out of it, and in my opinion, the game is more fun. You're more on the edge of your seat, you more have to use your brain and tactics to get through it. You're not just trudging boringly through it. And it's not like it's that hard, I mean, we're not on the edge of our seat, um, getting the crap beaten out of us or anything like that, but we did build a, ver build a very smart party. Um, two heroes, I mean two fighters, the hero and a pilgrim, it's pretty awesome. I'm never, I've never been a big fan of wizards and stuff in these games, just because um, they, you're doing less damage, but you have a resource to use. You have magic point, points to use. I guess you can do more damage to groups, but, you know, fi if you have a fighter in your party, then you're doing consistent damage. You don't have to worry about using magic points, except to, of course, heal them and keep them up, but you have to do that anyway. So in my opinion, with the fighters, you're just simply doing more damage. You can take more hits. And yeah. Wizards are really good for their support spells, though. Like increase, which increases everyone's defense. And, um... This way? Looking for the Champagne Tower. There it is. But yeah, which is why we are going to turn our Pilgrim into a Sage, so that she gets the support spells as well as the healing spells. And not that the Pilgrim doesn't get support spells. But the wizard gets spells like by kill, which turns, which doubles the attack power of somebody, and that is going to be amazing for our fighters. But even that's not reliable because a lot of the uh, Huma bats, those things look hilarious. But uh, even those, even those aren't as useful because what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, some of the final bosses constantly use something that takes away everybody's buffs, and those bosses have breaths that do a ton of damage to everybody. And that's actually something the fighters are really bad against defending, because they don't have any armor that, like, repels fire and ice and stuff like that. So you have to cast barrier, and you have to keep barrier up. And if you don't keep barrier up, then your party eats shit. So the cleric kind of has to be on that duty, and the hero has to be kind of a backup dealer, healer in this case. Um, but it doesn't matter because the f because you're not hurting for damage because the fighters are fucking critting the shit out of the boss at that point. Even without buy kill. So, yeah. <laughs> what, what gets around the, uh, problem of a fighter not, not being able to keep buy kill on your fighter? Two fighters. That's what gets around that problem. And those gas clouds <laughs> shoot gas at you, which is annoying as shit. So I'm gonna kill those first, and we cannot one-shot the human bats. And we are at the point where we are going to see some major improvement in our fighters with 
every well not major but significant improvement in our fighters every level they hit and I'm kind of excited because the fighters are next level if Bryant doesn't eat shit during this next battle there we go strength goes up six points that is ridiculous. Not as much as mu not as much as Brian's, but still, we're going to start seeing some ridiculous stat gains on our fighters. Seven points. That's a new weapon. That's a weapon upgrade for Brian. See what Hornhead has to say. This is the notorious Tower of Champagne. Okay. Does he just kind of sit there and that's his job? He's the he's the dungeon greeter. The Dragon Quest games seem to have people in dungeons as kind of a tradition where they usually like taunt you and say like, ha, ah, I'm going to find whatever before you. I'm trudging up this dungeon too. And they don't really move from their spot and then when you complete the dungeon and find it and get back, they're like, you found it! Oh no! You know, I thought I would find it before you! It's hilarious. Later in the game, they, you can talk to your party members by pushing, like, B or whatever. And it's kind of funny because your party is always like, Oh no, we have to hurry! We have to find whatever it is we're looking for before that guy does! <laughs> it's hilarious. I don't know. I, I find that funny. But you might not. As you can guess, I'm a large fan of the Dragon Quest series. It's a very simple role-playing games that are fun to play. Open-ended, you kind of have to figure out what you have to do. Oh, suddenly mount an attack. That's something I think that modern role-playing games kind of miss out on is actually having to figure out what to do and not having you in a hallway like oh my god Final Fantasy 13 I hate that game so much Humana bats No, not Humana Bats. We're starting to get up there in the gold, aren't we? Can actually buy stuff for the hero soon. Once we buy the initial equipment for the hero, which we're going to do throughout a series of dungeons and stuff, then it becomes a lot easier to manage because you're going through dungeons and getting gold and instead of buying like, okay, I need a helmet, I need a shield, I need a weapon, and I need armor for the hero, and right now that's what we need. We need to get all these things. You're just like getting an upgrade every once in a while. I mean, it's not... And it's not going to be bad at all, since the hero is the only person, and the sage, slash priest, but after a while, we will get the best stuff for her to equip really easily. Um, and we don't have a soldier, we just have fighters. We do have to pr buy um, cloaks of evasion for the fighters, which cost 2,000 gold each, which... 
you know, seems like a lot right now, but later on you're gonna find fucking things that cost like thousands and ten, maybe even tens of thousands of gold. I don't know if you get something that expensive in this game. I'm not sure. I think you do. But the point is, once we get the Cloaks of Evasion, we're done. Like, we are done with the fighters. They have, that's their ultimate equipment, is Iron Claws and a Cloak of Evasion. There's no way to make them better. In terms of equipment. <laughs> you, so don't think, make I'm, think I'm sounding like I'm complaining, that's actually awesome. Because all of their improvements are in stats and hit points and stuff like that. So they're good as far as equipment goes. The hero, on the other hand, is dependent on equi equipment. But he's the only one in our party who is. Really. My, uh, Willow kind of is, but... Um, she's not that bad. <sighs> Yay, Willow gained a level. Willow learns a new spell. Well, what'd she learn? She learned heal more. She learned sapphic spell. She learned sleep. She still does not know how to cure poison. But that's okay. We don't seem to be running into many poisonous enemies out here. I mean, killer bees might be able to poison. I haven't seen them do it yet. <laughs> Hilarious if they did it right then. Finding medical herbs, that's pretty cool. We have antidotes, we have plenty of antidotes. So, if there is something in this dungeon that poisons, it does it so rarely that we haven't seen it yet. Man, we're doing. Those fighters are just doing some damage. Bam! Don't know how many hit points Kandar has, because I know that we do have to fight him. At the end of this. Jeez. One step encounters. This game has that. But the fights go fast enough. See? Fight's over. Done. Not too bad, and you get some experience in gold. Sweet. Don't know if this is the way out. Let's explore the rest of the floor before we go take that route. Bryant attacks the killer bee, kills it, and everyone else attacks the army crabs. Just take a little bit of a beating before they go down. party splits the damage because it loves to do that. The human mana bat suddenly mounts an attack. We got jumped. Poor Humana Bats. One thing that you might have noticed is that I did 27 damage to one of them, didn't kill it, and 24 damage to one, did kill it. That's because the hit points, as you can probably guess, have a variance to them. Some monsters have more hit points than others. It's actually kind of cool in that respect. I'll wait a bit before I heal them. They're still at a respectable level, and I don't want to waste... I want to overheal and waste healing points.
Man, Molly did some good damage there. And Brian did some shitty damage. Willow's going to waste her attack, which is actually a shame, because she probably could have killed that, uh... B. Vanquish all of our foes! Medical herbs eat, heal a lot in this game, and we just wasted our time. Dead end, no treasure. Four humana bats. <laughs> I think those are hilarious. I don't know, they just look goofy to me. Hey, we didn't split the damage up too bad. That one's dead. And that one's dead. Alright. Time to move up in the world to floor three. Never thought I'd get to floor three of the Champagne Tower, but we're there, aren't we? We made it there together. Ooh, poison silkworms. Dead poison silkworms, that is. <laughs> Eat shit. Ah, a chest. Demon toadstools. I assume that... Wow, well, Bryant and Molly do, I mean, yeah, Bryant and Molly do enough damage to one-shot those things, so I really didn't have to worry about, yeah, bam. F.U. Demon Toadstools, and one-step encounter. More Demon Toadstools. Bryant and Molly, unlike the soldiers, also have high agility, which means they're going to attack first. Hey, some good gold. How much are we up to? We're up to 2,000. We can probably buy, when we, by the time we get out of this dungeon, we can probably buy the hero a broadsword and full plate armor. Yeah. Humana bats. Demon Toadstool. Alright. Is that Kandar? I bet that's Kandar. He shall pay? I know it's not Kandar. Molly's in her teens, so we better heal her. And hey, I didn't overheal at all. She has 42, 52 out of 54. The herb was not wasted. Yeah, that high agility for the fighters really makes a difference. 
two one-step encounters in a row. It's not going to matter because Molly is going to destroy that poison cloud. Oh, never mind. It gets ablaze in. Molly attacked last. What the hell, Molly? What the hell? Jeez, this is like the room of encounters, isn't it? Yeah, that high agility really makes a difference, especially if you're just encountering one enemy at a time. I mean, two, one or two enemies at a time. And the fighters gain levels. Strength goes up three. That was a decent level for the fighter. And here comes Molly's. Three, three, two, three, one, three. Molly's well, getting lesser levels, but apparently there are thieves in this town. The game is set so that if you fall enough behind that it will catch you up. So, nice to know. Ow. Ow. How are you hitting those gas clouds? It's curious. I might be wrong. We might hit level 10 within the tower. Alright. We got the jump on these things, so they're likely all going to die. Bam. Bryant got a crit. Molly did not. Molly got a good hit then that time, and all the foes are vanquished. Jeez, I am just getting really bad, unlucky with the encounters this floor. But, like I said, the combats are short. Why wouldn't you take two fighters? Man. I'm beginning to think I should have taken three fighters in the hero. This actually sounds like a pretty legit party. I think this is... Hmm. Ah, I think I recognize this floor. This is the floor where you actually fight Kandar. Three demon toadstools and two demon toadstools. We'll have all on one group. There we go. I will attack the last one, kill it, and then... Oh no, no, no! Yay! Yes, run! <laughs> run for my fighters! That other demon told Soul should have ran, but it didn't. And now he regrets it, for he is dead. Alright, let's heal the party. Climb the stairs. Whoa, get a load of these weirdos. Yep, we better go tell the boss. 
weirdos. You call me a weirdo, you freak. You done well to get this far. I gotta hand it to you. Just one more thing. Ain't no one gonna cut, can catch us. See ya, suckers. <laughs> so they got they got the stuff and they took off. We're going to go right after them. Stubborn fools! I'll show you who's boss. One Kandar, and they carefully placed it, so, and I don't remember, hmm, I have, attack one more, just in case, and speed up the party. Yep, we're going to slowly take them out. All right, do that, and then have, and then have Bryant and Willow heal the party. I mean, Denny and Willow heal the party. This is a really good way to fight bosses with this party. Heal. Everybody else attack. Might as well cast Sap. Here come the crits. And we killed them. Awesome. Hero and Willow go up levels. We both load new spells. I give. Will you let me go if you give it you get the golden crown? Will you promise? I am forgiving. I will let you go. Thanks, I'll never forget this. Bye. They all jump off. Hey, I wonder what was in the other chest. You looted both of those chests and took off, you sons of bitches. Ugh. Let's go back to Romali. I wonder what was in that other goddamn chest. We Can we get there this way? Hey, there's a shrine down there. And I think it looks like we prepared just enough to conquer that tower with little difficulty. Um, that's why I don't grind, because, yeah, we didn't need to. If you have smart tactics and build a smart party, you don't need to grind on things. I guess I kind of did in the beginning to get enough money for herbs and stuff like that, but... I kind of want my fighters to raise the level again. Might get my wish if I have this terrible encounter rate the entire way back. Defeated the rogue knight. Alright. 
I guess we go to tech distribution and Molly gets a crit. I guess the, pu the future pup is going to get an additional turn. Yep. See, agility not only determines um, who goes first, it also determines defense, which is why Molly and Bryant have such a high defense. But I don't think it if you change agility in the middle of combat using speed up, if that increases the defense of your entire party. Indeed, when Willow cast speed up, it increased their agility drastically. But it didn't um, make much of a difference in how much damage they were taking. Molly still has higher strength. 73 attack power and 35 defense. 75 attack power. See, every 5 points is... an addition to their attack power. And they have 35 defense, and the, as opposed to the hero who has 29 defense. Ah, so the hero is probably going to pass them up in terms of defense when we get back to town and buy things for him. We'll buy a broadsword and some armor. And we'll take a long needed stay at the inn. And we'll return the golden crown. game is terrible. Crush, crush, crush. Eventually goes down. We have a lot of gold. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to stay at the inn for the night. Pay 16 gold pieces of gold. Okay, so we can't buy full plate armor. We can buy half plate armor, though. Looks like Denny is going to have to hand stuff off to other peoples. Other peoples. armor and an iron shield I rod I don't know if there's a steel shield I think there's just an iron shield all right now Denny's defense has drastically passed up the other two 
So we are going to stick him in front. And we're going to sell leather armor. And basically all of our old weapons. Alright, so, just to point out, Denny has the best equipment money can buy right now. His attack power is 61, and the fighter's attack power is 75. And that gap is just going to keep getting bigger and bigger as the game goes by. Granted, the Iron Claws are about as powerful as the Broadsword, but basically every time the fighters level up, they get an equipment upgrade. Oh no. Well, that's the kind of thing. Demi can get numb all he wants. If he was the only fighter in the party, that would be the only person who could fight in the party, that would be bad, but with And he recovered. Notice how he wasn't his sprite wasn't shifting through animations at first, and now it is. That's because he recovered from paralysis. Alright, we are back in Romilly, so I think that's good for this Let's Play. Let me just check the weapons shop. See if he has any new helmets. Chainmail, bronze shield, leather armor. How about you, Mr. Tool Shop? Nope, You all you have is leather helmet. You are both useless to me. Anyway, that's good for today. Next time, we will return the crown and then go north and see what we can do about that sleeping village. So until then, have a good night.